believe it or not, we are at Help Save Our World Speak number 79. And we are so close to coming to the end of what I wanted to write in this book or have written in this book. <clears throat> so the question today is, are you a dream catcher? Becoming a great crowd and teacher begins with self-mastery, mastering your states of consciousness and gaining the life skills that improve your life and your states of consciousness. Hello, I'm Dennis Moore, your host for the next hour. Welcome to our 79th Help Save Our World Speak online speakers meeting, where we are changing the conversation to change our world. These meetings are based on my book, Beyond the Age of Ignorance, your quest for the truth, change, and transformation. Our vision is to create a love-based, happy, healthy, and sustainable future for all life on Mother Earth. We believe that the only way to help save our world is to empower you with the truth, the knowledge, the skills, and the wisdom that you need to change your life so you can help us help save our world. We cannot do this alone. That's why we're empowering you to join us so together we can make a radical difference in our world and create the magical future for our children or the future that our children deserve and all life on our home planet also deserves. Let's begin with introductions. Alex? Hi, I'm Alex. I'm here in South Africa, and I've been enjoying the lovely winter sun of Africa these last few days, and I'd like to continue enjoying it into the future. So I'm here to help save the world and keep it running for a few more generations. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Brendan? Hi, I'm Brendan. I'm here in South Africa. As you can hear, we've got some noisy birds in the background. <laughs> I am part of this movement in order to help show people that there is a better way. Excellent. Brendan, Kurt? Yeah, so I'm Kurt. I'm going to give you a little view of where I'm at in uh, the Southern Rockies of Colorado. And I'm thrilled to be out here experiencing uh, the planet from a different place than Florida and just the, uh, the, the awareness and, uh, and the beauty and the connection with nature out here is so different than in the, the flat beaches of Florida. And it just reminds me uh, how, how precious our earth is and how important it is for us to, to maintain it. And you can imagine that the, uh, the people out here, uh, there's so much outside outfitters and camping and appreciation of the mountains and the rivers and everything else that it just brings home that it's a, it's a daily and moment by moment commitment for us to, to continue to keep the world in this pristine shape as we can. Excellent. Last week, we spoke about the altered states of consciousness. When you're out there, Beware while listening to the voices in your head and speaking to the metaphysical with your internal voices. Be wary of losing yourself out there. Also, be mindful of misinterpreting information that's out of context with your physical reality. It might be true universally, but unfortunately, the reality you live in is somewhat different in some cases. You have to keep your feet on the ground while consciously reaching out beyond the physical, or else you will be unable to function and live in this world, and others will perceive you as being out there. They will think of you as out of your mind, or that you've just gone totally bonkers. Your life's mastery and mastery of your states of consciousness are critically important because there's a fine line between living here and living out there. If you are constantly out there, you have to be mindful of losing your connection to the physical world and its reality. You remain grounded by regularly practicing checking back in with this physical reality, checking in with what you know to be true in this world keeps your feet on the ground. That's why you cannot function in chemically induced altered states of consciousness 
caused by substance abuse, weed, alcohol, drugs, psychedelics, psychotropics, or where you're giving away your conscious control to other predatory systems of power. The secret is to master all of your states of consciousness within your happy, healthy, and clean living and functioning body, and of course, clear thinking mind. When I began this journey, I was searching for the truth about the essence of reality, never giving up my motivation was always to help save the world. I tirelessly began analyzing, questioning, thinking, and reasoning. But most importantly, I just trusted the truth and the guidance and the intuition and my dreams that I received. I was magically guided through my experiential life's journey and this thought journey, my quest for the truth, change, and transformation. I was catching it as it passed me by and writing it down. All of these incredible insights, dreams, and natural wisdom, which are given to me precisely when I was ready to receive them, just through me trusting the journey and catching that wisdom and writing it down. They've magically come together to create and compose this world-saving philosophy in this book and course, Beyond the Age of Ignorance. I can't imagine that I myself was the creator of this thing. I see myself more as the, the receiver of this information and then the interpreter and, uh, I don't know, writer down of this information. Now, you too can become a dream catcher. So you can become a great guide and teacher to others. But this process is so fundamentally important. You need to write down your dreams, your first thoughts and insights you receive early in the morning as you're waking up, your intuitive thoughts that come to you randomly during the day, the life guidance and messages contained within these insights is critically important for you to decipher and work out and write that down. And you'll find underneath, underlying this whole process of guidance, there is this incredible natural wisdom of nature that you will perceive that's all around you. You need to catch it, bring it into this reality and make it real. Well, of course, writing it down is one thing, but word of mouth is such an incredibly important thing as well. By saying it and speaking it out to others, they can say, oh my oh gosh, I, I had an experience like that. And you validate them and you possibly inspire other realms of investigation and thought and the changes that we really need to make in this world. When you've traveled this journey and have having written everything down, you'll look back one day in amazement and see your changes, your personal changes throughout your journey and throughout your quest for the truth. You'll also sense the changes in your conscious connectedness to the essential energy of your internally and out there, which I refer to as NOV in my book, Gifts, or what others would call your spiritual relationship to the light and the colors of white light and beyond. You'll also be able to see your growth in awareness, knowledge, conscious connectedness, intuitiveness, and advances in connectivity to the universal energy and open communication to the non-physical. Looking back, I found this realization mind-blowingly interesting. Has anybody got a comment on this so far? I do, but I'm just writing it down. You come back to me later. Okay, Brennan? I have nothing to add at this point. Okay, no problem. Good. Yeah, I'll just uh, add that I think uh, journaling and diaries or, or whatever method that we use uh, to connect uh, is very important for us to, 
to create as a habit. And I think you're right. Looking back on it, it can show us our path and uh, the journey that we have chosen and why we might want to choose something else moving forward. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's just like, it's, I'll talk about it later, but, but just writing down what you perceive in on your journey, your experience of the journey that you're on right now, Kurt, um, just making little notes of things that you notice is also like a, like an incredible journey that, and, and maybe maybe yours is not just writing it down, it's taking photographs or video or whatever of your journey, but um, in some way recording it and seeing the changes happening around you, it's just so, so incredibly important. All right. I caught a dream. Recently exhausted after a meeting, I fell asleep at about 7.30 and awakened from my dreams at about 7, I mean, 11.30 p.m. And transitioning from my inspired awakening state, I wrote down my inspiration to make it part of this physical world, making sure I stayed in that dreamlike state of mind. So I would remember those insights because if you switch on lights or you transition too quickly, you lose it. Also making sure I didn't fall asleep or else it would fade from my consciousness, memory, and of course, this reality. This insight was so profound that I couldn't let it pass me by. Earlier during the meeting, I'd spoken about the light metaphor and the transition is from the darkness of greed, hatred, lies, deception, and ignorance into the light of love, truth, awareness, knowledge, understanding, rational thinking, reasoning, natural wisdom, and enlightenment. While dreaming, I drifted back of my historical knowledge, and the insight hit me between the eyes. The age of extreme religious dogma, dominance, and oppression was referred to in many books as the Dark Ages, which is followed by the Renaissance period, which was supposed to be the beginning of the awakening of rational thinking, the arts, mathematics, and science. I then dream drifted to my book, Beyond the Age of Ignorance, which is predominantly based on recent times. At the same time, I was referring back to historical trends, civilizations, rise and falls, and the natural and unnatural events I had researched all happening in my mind's eye. These concepts combined painted a very detailed picture of the oppressiveness and darkness of Western Abrahamic religions or um, uh, religions that came from ancient Egypt's pyramid schemes, throughout their ages and eras of dominance, and the dominance of the owners, the corporations, media, and governments. Then I was dreaming forwards through the ages about how little human life had changed during the Renaissance period, and even through this modern age. There had been almost a total lack of recovery from the dark ages. Dreaming, I saw that so many generations of humans were and still are lost in the darkness of fear, blind belief, hatred, and ignorance, stuck in selfishness, greed, and plundering, and the destructive centralization and centralized pyramid schemes of power. Throughout all of these ages, humans were unknowingly indoctrinated into that hate-based system. In my dream, I could see why we were still living in this age of ignorance. Nothing had changed throughout the religious pyramid scheme's dominance and throughout modern history. We still existed in the dark ages of unconscious thought controlled indoctrination. With the mind blowing clarity of dreaming, I had confirmed the relevance and importance of my teachings throughout this book, Beyond the Age of Ignorance. Humans 
had not changed their values and beliefs and paradigm in recent history. So the same corrupt institutionalized systems of power of the dark ages, pyramid schemes had just continued where they left off. Although there was a split in power between the major players, science and religion, during the Renaissance period, the dominant belief systems hadn't changed. So there was little to no essential fundamental change and little to no redistribution of wealth, energy, and power to all other life, as is fundamentally required for life to continue on this planet. My dream confirmed that little had changed and reinforced that fundamental change could only happen with a total paradigm shift changing all human motivation to equality, openness, care for all, and a sweeping redistribution of wealth and power to all life is fundamental to the continued existence of life on earth. The harmful and destructive values and beliefs were carried on throughout modern history and spread into modern power-based systems to perpetuate those values and beliefs in those new and growing institutions. So for fundamental change to happen, all institutionalized power-based systems have to change their fundamental values and beliefs and structural designs, or else they'll continue to perpetuate the darkness of the dark ages until the absolute collapse of all societies and all life on earth. We the people have a choice to make. Do we continue like foul in factory farm houses, just energy resources, slaves to power, where we are kept in the darkness of ignorance to the conniving people in power? The importance of these teachings cannot be overstated. This helps save our world thought journeys, books, and courses are critically important aids to your and humanity's transition and survival on Mother Earth. They're essential so we can all help save our world together. Beyond the Age of Ignorance is written and designed to unchain, release, and free you, me, and the rest of humanity from ignorance. It does this by showing the truth, raising your awareness, consciousness, and natural wisdom, and giving you the life skills to set you free from oppression, biased ideas, lies, and deception. Your oppression leads to the darkness of imposed ignorance. However, we guide you towards the love light of nature and the universe through these books, awakening you to the truth, awareness, consciousness, and natural wisdom through the process guiding you towards the light of enlightenment. In this way, we free you to think clearly and choose wisely. So together, we can create an equitable, happy, healthy, and sustainable world for you, all life, and your children. As a natural consequence of the process, we help save our world together and create the enlightened age of reason in which all life thrives for future generations of life. Any comments? Okay, I think I can oh, do mine now. Okay, go for it, Alex. This weekend, I was listening to a song, The Calm. And what I've done is basically just rewritten the words slightly that, that I really think puts this whole journey into context. You know, we don't need psychedelic drugs or major events for us to be out of touch with reality. It just takes a television. It takes a religious point of view or a political point of view and and taking that to the next level, you really need to check in with reality. Um, the song is Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer. I'm just going to read what I've written here. Just remember, this is the twisted version of what the song's lyrics are. All my friends and I, we all, all misunderstood. They stay, say we stand for nothing and there's no way we ever could. When you trust your television, religion, or political views, what you get is what you got, because when you own the information, they can bend it all they want. Now we can see everything that's going wrong with the world and those who lead it. With this journey beyond the age of ignorance, we can rise above and beat it. 
We keep waiting, waiting, waiting on the world to change. With this process, we can stop waiting and be a part of the change. Is that it? That's I like wonderful. That. I love it. Good. Well, I, I think that we all exist inside of a, a paradigm or a, <laughs> um, a system, regardless of what we choose. So I think the, the main freedom that human beings have is the ability to choose. And certainly that starts with choosing to be aware or to be aware of more than uh, the system one lives in and then to choose what to do about that. So whatever movement uh, we are looking to create or sustain uh, we get to realize that it's still a choice for somebody to to choose into it and it gets to be compelling it gets to be personal um, and it gets to be a contribution now that's that's obviously a, a context i just created with some words there uh, but i think that's what we're up to with this group is uh, to be willing uh, not only to see the change but then to be the change so thanks for that reading, by the way, Alex. It's uh, totally appropriate to what we're up to. Brilliant from both of you. I absolutely love the, the fact that you, you heard that song yesterday and you actually took it to heart. And I was listening to it as well. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's brilliant. And then personalizing it and, and making it relevant to this, that's awesome. I really appreciate that. And then, of course, as you said, Kurt, um, you know, it's one thing to to know what's going, to, to see what's going on and then to understand what's going on. But unless you act upon that, nothing changes. And, of course, those who are in power will do anything to make sure that nothing does change. So it's, in the beginning, it, it's going to be quite an uphill battle to bring about change but as long as we are committed to that change and to the survival of life on earth and to creating a better future and we keep on making the effort it's inevitable that it will happen the rate at which it happens is up to us so uh, as gandhi put it be the change you wish to see in the world yeah. All right, so that was the, the thing about, about dreams. So all I'm suggesting is that you make that effort just to bring your dreams into reality because you'll be so amazed at what a difference it can make. And there's such clarity, you know, you, you can be trying really hard to work something out and nothing works out and it's, not, it's unclear and you, you're just confused. And you have a nap and you wake up and it's absolutely crystal clear. And if you just take that moment to write it down or however long it takes to write it down, you can bring that clarity into this world. And it speeds up the process just by being a dream catcher. Anyone before I go on? I just want to bring up that I disagree with you saying that the people in power don't like change. They do like change, but only if it benefits themselves. <laughs> so you're right and wrong. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. Good point. <laughs> and then yeah. also, I just want to say I love both the statements from Alex and Kurt. That was brilliant, um, especially the way that Alex made that song and twisted it to be beneficial to the conversation. But yeah, that was just my comments. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah, I'm not 100% right all the time. I can't be. It's impossible. <laughs> all right. So, you know, um, I was uh, looking at the picture that Alec, Alex posted and saying, I'm, I'm pretty much out there. You know, I talk to the trees. Now, that might sound like I'm pretty crazy. And my last 
situation where I spent a lot of time talking to the trees was whenever I was out on the road, actually in Florida, I would spend a lot of my time gazing at trees, um, you know, sort of because it's always in front of you or to the slightly to the side of you. And I would talk to the trees. I like I would say, good morning. And the trees would come back with, good morning, Dennis, sort of charming back at me with this absolutely beautiful, like, voice inside my head, of course, with their pleasure and their happiness and appreciation of me seeing and greeting them of course, with great gratitude for them. No matter how I felt at that time, their sunshininess lit up my day. It just set the tone for the day. So if for no other reason, you just greet the trees just to make you feel better, it's absolutely wonderful. And of course, um, just appreciating the trees and the new growth at the and the uppermost leaves and just the the dark photosynthesis and chlorophyll in the lower leaves and just loving and appreciating that it just it's like the most magical thing that you you can imagine I, I mean it's even psychologically proven that green is like the color of happiness and that's what they use instead of blackboards they they have green boards often in schools, well, in South Africa. They did in the past. I don't know if they do now. All right, so communication with the trees and others that speak different languages and non-physical entities or energy consciousnesses, the language of consciousness is universal and quite often symbolic in dreams. This form of communication is obvious. And this form of communication is obvious, no matter what worldly language or in which culture you're raised. Although how you interpret this communication is the question. You can speak to the trees in your language with your intent and your meaning, and that will radiate outward from you. The tree in perfect understanding hears you in its language or cognition. Then it communicates outwards to you in its conscious language or information patterns, which you receive in perfect accord with it. And you interpret it in your language and your cultural awareness. You can talk to the trees and nature if you're open to it and you practice doing it. You'll get better at it with time and the more you do it. Anybody want to comment on that? I don't hear the trees talking back to me but I feel them when I place my hand on them it's my way of saying you know hello how are you I'm present um, in your energy and I feel it radiating this buzzing energy back I love that you know it, it's only when you put your hands on the tree that you can feel the vibrations of the tree and the temperature of the water and the just the feeling of its presence I love that uh, Anybody else? Good. Well, I've been a tree hugger since the, <laughs> the mid 60s and probably before that when I went to camp as a kid. So, yeah, I'm I'm in touch with trees. I appreciate the uh, the deep, deep knowledge of their experience of being around some of them for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, so, yeah, I feel energy from the trees and from the forest. And as we know, they are integral to our ability to exist on this planet. So I appreciate them. There's another song that I heard this weekend. Um, something Big Yellow Taxi, I think it's called, about put all the trees into a museum so we can go spend $1.50 to go see them um, instead of appreciating what we've got um, and enjoying every minute of their presence right now. They yeah, what is that other paradise. one? They chopped down it to put in a parking lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's called. They, I think they, it's called Big Yellow Taxi. Yeah. Yes, it's Melanie. Yeah, they paved paradise, put up a parking lot. Yeah. Yeah, and insane. The interesting thing is, uh, you're going west, uh, or you're going to go north to the great big redwoods in Oregon and that region. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. 
I, I did visit the Redwood Forest about two years ago. So oh, wow. it's just an incredible experience. Absolutely. How old are the oldest trees there? I couldn't tell you exactly, but I'm going to say hundreds and hundreds of years and uh, maybe a couple of them into the six, seven hundred years. Wow. Amazing. Um, it's just like if we think of our oldest human and like we, we think of, OK, they must be pretty wise. I can, can you imagine like the wisdom of life and experience and changes and everything that's possibly happened? that sort of incorporated into the wisdom of the tree. Um, to me, that's just absolutely like they are our great elders. I like that. Right. All right. So concerning what I've just said, the question now becomes, why do humans not understand all the different languages that they speak? And why are languages used as like entrance barriers? You see, these human languages are taught and learned with specific human groups and cultural groups and are peculiar or particular, peculiar to their, to those groups. Although in most cases, you can read others' energy tone very well. Body language is also often unambiguous, easily read and understood, except for some cultural exceptions. To some cultures, an animal smiling, showing your teeth, might be perceived as an, an act of aggression. I just needed to talk about that. There's a few things now because we're like running down to the end of this whole sequence of meetings. And there were certain things that I wanted to clarify. So the symbolism of ultraviolet light. To avoid misunderstanding, I want to clarify that even though I used ultraviolet light as a metaphor for the non-physical in this final chapter of my book, Beyond the Age of Ignorance, ultraviolet light doesn't incorporate all of the non-physical energy, vibrating energy realms of consciousness, universal knowledge, wisdom, and the non-physical conscious living, dynamic, changing information universe. I use ultraviolet light in this sense, purely to symbolize the non-physical in all of its complexity. In reality, you can perceive the metaphysical in many complex forms through focused intent and practice. You can perceive the metaphysical in many forms from your perspective, when you're daydreaming, Sensing, feeling, emotions, thoughts, inspirational thoughts, thinking, imagination, creativity, positive energy, consciousness, aha moments, intuition, guidance, speaking to the non-physical, connecting with people who have passed, your ancestors, your guides, or connecting with the collective unconscious, or while in altered states of consciousness, and also experiencing those magical moments in moments like deja vu and premonitions and many other forms of consciousness and all forms of received energy patterns of vibrations, all are non-physical and yet real. A lot of the materialistic age has promoted the idea that if you even consider these uh, non-physical factors that you are sort of out there and not in the realm of the real. But this is all real. We experience it every day, or most of us do, I hope, unless I'm the only one. When you eventually complete the full circle of raising your awareness and consciousness to a state of enlightenment, you will see the universe and everything within it composed of the same vibrating energy, energy, all vibrating and moving and changing patterns of vibrations upon patterns of vibrations. It's just this complexity of vibrations. Everything is vibrations, as Einstein said. From your perspective as a human, you perceive reality as physical compositions of energy moving in patterns of and compositions of relatively localized energy. All are perceived as happening somewhat 
in the now. However, the rest of the conscious and living universe is the same, even if you cannot see it with your eyes. Scientifically, ultraviolet light is a non-visible band of electromagnetic vibrational frequencies and waves of symmetrical vibrations on the electromagnetic wave spectrum, just beyond the frequencies of violet, the color violet in the light spectrum, of the vis visible light spectrum, up to the frequency and wavelength of X-rays. You can refer to the notes for more details. In the electromagnetic spectrum of energy, vibrations energy of space, there are many other vibrational frequencies on either side of what could be considered simplified, regular, consistent, symmetrical, measurable, scientific vibrations of the spectrum of electromagnetic frequencies of vibration. As in the frequencies of colors that combine to compose white light, that's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That white light, which is radiated out from the sun. However, sunlight varies in its intensity with our relative movement and angle of incidence relative to the incoming sunlight. Then superimposed upon these energy waves of different frequencies or carrier waves, which could be considered regular and consistent, measurable, simplified vibrations of space, is other vibrational information. I was talking to Rowan and I was explaining how radio waves work. You have the radio wave frequency, which is maybe a long wave, and then you have sound waves superimposed upon that carrier wave. And so, Information is superimposed upon information. Vibrations are superimposed up upon vibrations and transmitted over long distances and then decoded and, and, um, and, and the audio is taken off the carrier wave and then turned into sound waves. So think of speaking as information vibrations energy that is superimposed upon air atoms this is just in our reality, vibrating at their vibrational frequencies, the superimposed sounds affect the, the air atoms relationship to one another as sound information, vibrations, or waves passing through the air atoms, compressing and rarefying the, the, the density of the atoms in the patterns of sound information, sound waves. There are infinite other non-symmetrical vibrations and combinations of knowledge and wisdom and consciousness and patterns, etc. cetera. This energy can also be thought of as dynamic, living, conscious information uh, a con and a conscious information universe. But unlike digital or even analog linear sequential information, this is rounded and moving and spatial and spiraling and elliptical and helical and radial and vibrating, dynamic and often living and conscious. Um, if you want, I can just uh, give you the scientific ultraviolet light, an article by Jim Lucas. Ultraviolet light is a type of electromagnetic radiation that makes black light posters glow and is responsible for summer tans and sunburns. However, too much exposure to UV radiation is damaging to living tissue. And it's especially damaging to microorganisms. They often use it to purify water, use ultraviolet light shining into the water. Electromagnetic radiation comes from the sun and is transmitted in waves at different wavelengths and frequencies. This broadcast range of wavelengths is known as the electromagnetic EM spectrum. The spectrum is divided into seven regions in order of decreasing wavelength and increasing energy frequency. The standard designations are radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, visible light, ultraviolet light, 
X-rays and gamma rays. Ultraviolet UV light falls into the range of the EM spectrum between visible light and X-rays. It has frequencies of about eight times 10 to the 14 to three times 10 to the 16 cycles per second. Now that's incredibly fast or hertz. And the wavelengths of about 380 nanometers. So that's 380 times 10 to the minus nine meters. So it's this like tiny, tiny, tiny waves um, that are happening very, very fast at the speed of light to about 10 nano, nanometers. They have the things in inches here, but I, I'm not going to give that. According to an ultraviolet radiation guide from the US, UV is generally divided into three subbands UVA or near UV, which is 315 to 400 nanometers, UVB or middle UV, 280 to 315 nanometers, and UVC or far UV, 180 to 280 nanometers. And of course, there's a link in the, the notes. Can I comment on that? Yeah, go ahead. Did you know that UVB has been directly applied to, um, when directly applied to wounded tissue, can stimulate wound healing? Um, and also UV radiation of blood to stimulate immune system. Um, UVA has distinct effects on cell signal, but has not been widely used to apply to wound care. I just thought that was an interesting fact too. Yeah, Kurt, anyone else? No, I'm good. Uh, it, another interesting one is um, the, the amount of UVA or UVB um, radiation that enters the atmosphere is also dependent on the angle of incidence. Like when it's low in the sky, you won't get a, as much sunlight that will be harmful to you because it's like UVA. And then when it gets above you, it's, it's UVB. And then... Um, of course, I think it goes back towards UVA as it goes in the other direction, but but it's in those critical sort of high intensity UVB hours that that can be harmful to you, especially with ozone damage and all things like that, which we had, you know, I don't know, quite a few years back. So yeah, super interesting. So throughout your quest, I've been guiding you towards this new age of truth and the light of enlightenment. I also used the light metaphor to structure the book and course and enhance your understanding that this journey was from the dark age of ignorance to the light of enlightenment and beyond towards the new age of reason, truth, love, and natural wisdom. The light metaphor shows you the importance of the quest for the truth. It also enhances your understanding of your journey of awakening, seeking awareness, raising your conscious connectedness, capturing that natural wisdom and changing your perspective and raising your state of enlightenment. Now that you're nearing the end of this journey, you should have achieved the state of enlightenment through your transformational journey you having traveled from the darkness of the age of ignorance into the light of truth, love, and enlightenment. The new age has been referred to as the golden age or the new astrological age of Aquarius, which is supposed to be the golden age of enlightenment. And this planet-wide human awakening was sung about in the 60s. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. However, nothing changes unless we undergo this profound awakening. Nothing changes unless you're listening to your intuition and then bringing its love and purity into this reality. Your guides, ancestors, interveners, entities, nature, universal consciousness speaks to you all the time. Are you tuned in, listening, and bringing it into our world? We have such great potential if only we are willing to listen and bring universal consciousness and natural wisdom back into this world and reality. However, 
We only have that potential if we're willing to question everything, speak about it, about what we receive, and make it real and become it ultimately. And this only happens if we tune into universal consciousness and find out what the truth is and bring it into this reality. It also only happens if you're the most aware, healthy, consciously connected human being you can be. So you can tune in here and understand the guidance messages. Remember, you can only receive what you're ready to receive. So are you ready? Anyone? I would have to say yes with qualifications. And I think that's the position of most human beings, um, unless we're just totally open to absolutely everything. And yes, the reason that I'm on these calls, and I think the reason that we're together is to be open to change from maybe old habits that weren't serving us or the world. Okay, so what are the qualifications? <laughs> I think that's an individual situation based on what belief systems we, we've been operating out of, how far we think we've come, whether we resonate with the concept or not. So I think all of those things would, uh, would create some kind of reservation. Um, and I'm speaking in general terms here. Uh, but I think it's an individual situation to understand why some people are fully open and some are not at any particular moment. Awesome. Alex? I think I agree with Kurt there. I mean, you know, have you been on this journey? Have you applied everything that needs to be applied? Have you done the meditation? Have you connected with the universe? Can you feel? Can you hear? Can you see what's going on? If you can't yet, uh, I think you need some uh, training. Um, if you are on the right uh, road and you are feeling a little bit open, I'm sure you've got a whole lot more to go. Yeah, it's a journey. And um, I often have to go back and refresh my own memory on many, many things. So um, I don't think we're, it's like that state of being is like you, you get there and that's and you're, you, you, you've arrived. <laughs> it's like, yay! Like, I'm like, yeah, no, yeah you, you're there for maybe five seconds and then you're Boom. back. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, it's a state of consciousness that is, is really you need to sit and tune into. Um, and it's not something that can necessarily be held for an extended period of time um, unless you're really, really, really great at it and probably been out in the wilderness for many, many days. So, Kurt, I expect you there in a few days, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'll join you all um, just later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, I would say now that you mention it, Alex, yeah, even even place affects one's willingness, right? Mm. And uh, if we're if we're in a busy, smog-ridden, loud city, maybe we're less open uh, for things than if we're out in the, the beautiful mountains with clean air and green trees all around. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, it's and noise pollution. Of, it's uh, air yeah. pollution. It's all these smogs that are affecting your thought process and um, uh, clouding your thoughts, I should say. The smog is clouding your thoughts. Um, yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, clean air, fresh water, um, a healthy body, a healthy immune system, um, healthy living. I mean, it really all is a part of that. Any emotional blockages is a blockage, uh, It you know. Um, and it's not allowing information to pass through. And, and, that's, so, and that is a quest or a, a item that you need to overcome or, or go through. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything is definitely a, an aspect of that needs attention. Well, you, you just reminded me that, yeah, in communication, there's often interference, right, um, between human beings, whatever it might be. And that's both external and, as we know, internal, right? <laughs> our belief systems, our, our emotional state, uh, whether we're hungry or not, all of that. So even if we've arrived sometime, the finish line is actually the starting line again, right? So it's a, we're human beings, not human done. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I've been listening to golden oldies, you know, um, John Denver and so on. And just the, the thought of you being up there and sort of that song, I am the eagle and I live in high country, rocky cathedrals, they reach to the sky. It just to me, it's like 
that magnificence of purity and cleanliness and nature and the wind and the ah, oh, just everything. It's just like ethereal. It's uh, it's magical. If things don't change. They're not going to be there long. So enjoy them while yes. they're there. Well, just on that point, today is Independence Day in America, right? Oh, wow. Okay, and, yeah. Yes, July 4th, um, a date we celebrate as independence. And you can see the irony of that based <laughs> on where we are as a country right now and the amount of independence we have as a society, um, as individuals, and even as a country. So yeah, it's a constant, constant process. It's a constant iteration of... Uh, of tapping into awareness, um, making an interpretation, and then taking an action on it. And we continue to do that continually based on what we're after and what we're up to. And one more time, I reinforce that conversations like this um, are part of that process of keeping us true to our, our direction and keeping the context that we choose to live in uh, alive and interactive. So thanks always for participating in this, guys. Wow. And to you, Kurt, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, that. we've gone through that hour amazingly quickly, and I, I love your contributions. <laughs> Anybody want anything to say? Because we're still, I mean, we started a bit late, so anything you have to say is would be perfect now. Thanks for being here and contributing. All right, thank you all very much. Alex? Yeah, no, thanks, guys. I think it was a perfect uh, ending to a great meeting anyways. So, yes, thank you all. All right. If I don't see you through the thank week, I'll see you through the Zoom window. Bye, Brendan. <laughs> bye. Bye, Kurt, guys. Bye. All right. Good. Bye.